The Goldfinch is almost too good to be true. It's almost 800 pages of Donna Tartt at her best, weaving together this epic story. My name is William. I'm the author of a novella called Fumes, and I hope this video finds you in a good reading groove. If not, I have a recommendation for you. It's the best novel I've read so far this year, hands down, and it absolutely knocked me out. This thing is not only the best book I've read so far this year, but has had me thinking about it nonstop since I finished it, and I'll likely have to dive back in and reread it sometime next year, because there are a lot of other books that I wanna to get to first, but in case the title and thumbnail of the video weren't obvious enough, I'm talking about The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. Last year, or was it earlier this year? I think it was earlier this year. I finished reading The Secret History, which was her debut novel, and I loved that. I knew that I was ready to try The Goldfinch again, which I bought years ago, and tried to get into a couple of times, but as you may notice, this is a pretty long novel, and I would say right off the bat that that's really the only thing that I think holds it back. There are a lot of us who, if we're really busy with school or with work, won't have the time to sit down and read something like this, but I assure you that once it gets its hooks in you, once you get past, say, the 100 page, 150 page mark, this thing will have a powerful effect if Donna Tartt's writing is your cup of tea, and it certainly is for me. In this video, I'll be doing my best to make the case for why you should read this book. I certainly recommend it, and I won't be giving anything major away. I'll have to talk about some of the aspects of the plot towards the beginning, but really want this to be a completely novel experience for you if you do end up picking up the, the novel. This is a story about a guy named Theo Decker, who when he's 13 or 14 years old, loses his mother in an explosion in a museum. And at that museum are lots of very valuable works of art. And one way or another, he ends up leaving the building, not only with a painting, but also with a bit of a, a token, a, a ring um, from someone who he meets there. And taking that ring to someone who knows that person who died, ends up being the basis for a relationship that is really needed in Theo's life going forward. That's more or less the description you'll get on the back of the book, and it's accurate, but the story is about way more than that. I would encourage you to think of The Goldfinch more like a book series than a single novel. I watched an interview by Donna Tartt where she described the way she works and, and how she describes it kind of in her own words is that She's a bit of a miniaturist. She really likes to pay extreme attention to the details of her story and work at a slow pace. That's why she only puts out one book a decade. And uh, if the past is anything to go by, she's about due for another novel here pretty soon. But her books are also really long. And so even though she works with a great attention to detail, which by the way, is one of the greatest pleasures of reading this book, every sentence is very carefully constructed. She puts the entire work together, creates something that is more akin to the sorts of massive paintings that you might see like in the Louvre across from the Mona Lisa. She clearly loves all of the characters in this book, even the ones that are rather deplorable and have really awful aspects to their character and imagines the entire world so richly that once you're in it, part of the tragedy of the book, the sadness contained within it, is that you know at some point it's going to end. In addition to Theo Decker, who's the main character in the story, there's also a family, the Barbers, who take him in close to the beginning of the story, and there are multiple siblings in that family, but early on there's a guy named Andy, who Theo has been pretty good friends with in school, who he kind of uh, rekindles what had been a bit of a dying friendship with. And in addition to the Barber family, who's important throughout the novel, we also are introduced about a third of the way through to a character named Boris. Boris has an Eastern European background and he is, this is explicitly a comparison that's made in the novel, basically the artful dodger of the story. And if you're unfamiliar with the artful dodger, he's a character in Oliver Twist who is sort of the mischievous but mostly good-hearted sidekick to Oliver throughout the story. He's part of the crew of thieves that Oliver takes up with. And Boris is one of my favorite characters that I've been introduced to in literature in the last five to 10 years. His character worked for me on every level and I was thoroughly entertained every time he was on the page. 
It also would be silly of me not to mention a character named Pippa, who is a girl about Theo's age, who is also in the museum at the time of the bombing, the explosion at the beginning of the story. And when Theo is at his most vulnerable there at the beginning of the story, it is Pippa and the joy that her company brings him, as well as the painting, the goldfinch that he took with him, that sustain him in those really dark moments towards the beginning of the novel right after his mother dies. And again, you can get all of this on the back cover of the book, so I'm not really spoiling much of anything. Because Donna Tartt is so well known for the extreme success of The Secret History, which was the first book that she wrote, a lot of people draw comparisons between The Secret History and The Goldfinch and are pretty torn about which they like better, though I will say that in general, people seem to like The Secret History more. I prefer The Goldfinch by a very slim margin, and I'll tell you why. Because I love Donna Tartt's writing, she can't do no wrong as far as I'm concerned, but I mean, her standard of work is so high that she wouldn't put anything out that would be extremely disappointing to me. But if you love Donna Tartt's writing, as I do, The Goldfinch is almost too good to be true. It's almost 800 pages of Donna Tartt at her best, weaving together this epic story that, again, reads more like maybe a trilogy or a book series. It's all narrated by Theo in the first person, and the culmination of the work is very moving. I had a really emotional experience when I, when I finished this. There's a certain edge to the way that Donna Tartt writes her books that really appeals to me. I love that she doesn't hold back much with her characters, they do awful things, they behave poorly, they betray each other, they sabotage each other's best interests, and they have redeeming qualities as well. Everything is so carefully balanced in the novel, and I really appreciated that the entire way through. Every time something that seems almost too awful or almost too good happens, there is kind of an equal and opposite reaction, and the effect of that, especially now that I'm looking back on the entire novel having finished it, is awe-inspiring. I really can't thank Donna Tart enough for taking her time with this novel. It very easily could have been rushed. Probably there are sections of the book that could have been cut or trimmed down, but what we get is the equivalent of like the director's cut of a movie if they had an additional hundred million dollars in budget to make sure that everything was dialed exactly as they wanted it to be. Not the way that, you know, like a studio would want the, the finished product to feel. The novel is mostly set in New York, though there's a little bit of it that takes place in Europe, some of it that takes place in Las Vegas. There are surprises, twists and turns throughout. It definitely reads like a thriller and is very engaging. Definitely don't think of this as a super art focused, like high flutin, inaccessible story. It is very much so grounded and though it's really rich and the level of detail is great, everything that's in the novel is there for good reason. Every sentence, every clause is enriching your experience. The Goldfinch has been described as Dickensian and it certainly is. Dickens is probably Donna Tartt's favorite writer. Haven't spoken to her ever, but I feel like she would say that based on what I've seen in interviews that she's done. And though Oliver Twist certainly had a big influence on the story, there are a lot of explicit parallels drawn to Harry Potter as well. In fact, the character of Boris, who is good friends with Theo, constantly refers to him as Potter because of the way that he dresses and where he's from and Boris's relative lack of knowledge about like New England culture and the UK. It's a pretty endearing pet name that Boris has for, for Theo. It's really rare that someone is so good at all of the macro components of composing a novel, making all of the chapters and acts perfectly proportioned and lined up so well, but also very dialed in with uh, their ear for dialogue and extremely capable of writing long, beautiful sentences as well. Like, this is truly a master at work and the Goldfinch won the Pulitzer Prize for a reason. There are very few novels that I've been this impressed by.
it feels extremely modern and was a real treat to read cover to cover. There's not much more I can say about this novel without giving away parts of the plot that I'd rather you just be able to experience for yourself, so I'll leave it here. And if you haven't already, definitely consider subscribing. I'll be making book-related content on this channel indefinitely, and I'm on the cusp of launching Bindery, which is a really exciting book-focused platform that I'm stoked to be a part of. There are about nine of us content creators who make up the original founding crew of Bindery, and you can think of it like Patreon. Subscribing to me on Bindery is the best way to support this work that I do and free up more of my time to focus on reading, writing, and making videos. Thank you for sticking with me through to the end of this video. Happy reading, and I'll see you in the next one.